Listen, I don't know if there's been another more successful person that's ever come out of the culture. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, and she did it with twice the burden. Really, an asset. She's a woman, and she's a black woman. Come Facts. on now. Really, what they thought was a burden was an asset. It was her resource. Mm. That's where she got her power from. <laughs> when she first stepped out on the scene, we all praised her. Just from the visuals. I didn't know her, Heather. I just saw the pictures. Because you're not from Jersey. Okay, uh, whatever. Okay, let's whatever. be clear from the hoppy. Whatever. We'll get to that part. <laughs> You got to understand, as I read her list of accolades, I'm going to do it in front of her. Every time she comes here, I want people to know. I'm not going to catch them all, because in this list of accolades, it won't include the millions of people that she's inspired. Facts. The millions of girls and men that she's inspired that aspire to be just like her. Facts. When I look at her, I get excited. I want to get outside and do something. Mm Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what you want to do. Exactly. What do you want to do? Something. What do you want to do? Something. 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 Make it big. She got nominated for an Oscar in 03. Talk about it. She was awarded the Artist of the Year by the Harvard Foundation in 06. That Harvard. part. Mm. Uh, am I doing this wrong? No, uh, no, 03. Became the first hip hop artist to receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Wow. Come on, man. They don't talk about that. You just see them posting their pictures. That's a fact. Like they first. did it first. Come on. That's crazy, though. Nah, on the different. Hollywood Walk that's of Fame. Different. That's different. Also inducted the New Jersey Hall of Fame in 2011. Millions of albums she sold, Grammy Awards, mm. a, global, a Golden Globe Award. Wow. Shit. It's a lot, bro. Jeez. Two Screen Actors Guild Awards from five nominations, two NAACP Image Awards from 13 nominations, one Primetime Emmy Award Ugh. from three nominations, an Academy Award nomination in 2021. She received the BET Lifetime Achievement Woo! Award. What? It's a lot. Look at that boy going to church. Keep flowing. <laughs> and there's more. Boy going to church. You better stop playing. Mm. Received a critical acclaim for a portrayal of the blues singer Bessie Smith. Come oh on, my gosh. She co produced and winning the Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Television Movie. She starred as Carletta Brown, Carlotta Brown, in the musical drama series Star. I used to love Star. I hate Woo! that they took it down. <laughs> Hattie McDaniel in the miniseries Hollywood. Crazy. She's held the lead role on CBS's revival of the action drama The Equalizer. She's killing it. They got renewed. You know it. And she brought Jada onto the episode. Fire. Okay. <laughs> That's Tracy's contribution. So you know what I know. Tracy went to high school in Jersey. Hello. <laughs> Jersey oh. stand up. I remember my good friend Shaq Kim. That's right. Before the announcement was made, and I always say, how's Dana doing? Because you know why I love you. Well, if you don't, well, I mentioned it before. You looked out for me in ways where you did really didn't have no reason to do it mm. and i appreciated that but when he told me about the affordable housing um, building that you created in newark new jersey mm. um i thought because i often sit being in this game for so long wondering what is our next roles to play you know people who came in i came in as a rapper like you and heather i was from oakland not quite jersey <laughs> not quite not quite um kind of kind of right i mean yeah, oakland is more like pimps kind of north you and Dan, you and Latifah are like pimps too. So <laughs> <laughs> ladies both of y'all too. the same way. That's that Jersey girl. Positive um, pimping. Positive pimping. Pimping for the people. <laughs> for the pimping people. For the people. <laughs> but seeing you build this building, I know it took over 10 years to make this happen. Wow. But creating affordable housing for folks who couldn't otherwise afford to live in something as sleek and luxurious as this building that's going to have all kind of business centers in it for folks to just create in that community. Mm-hmm. That's why I was like, okay, that's our next role that we play as we mature in this culture. How do we find um, ownership, right? How do we utilize our our platforms to bring necessities back to our community? Mm -hmm. And you're walking in that path. Queen Latifah is here, I swear on everything I love. You in your car, you in your truck, everybody. Let's make some noise. The queen is here. Let's go. Queen Latifah. Woo! 
And she said it again. <laughs> She's a part of It's Bigger Than Me. And this is a movement uh, that um, she became the spokesperson of that's really putting the spotlight on something we all deal with in our families and our communities is obesity. Queen Latifah's here. Damn it, I'm good. My interview is done. Y'all take it. I'm ready to go. I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. I just need to say a couple of things about this obesity right. thing. And, um, I'm going to be I'm out, sit in the car and listen to it. Well, 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 how about more than 40% of adults in the United States, that's two out of five, are living with obesity? How about that? How, how about that, though? How about them numbers? Oh. Right? Four out of five black wow. women. And what is considered obesity? Well, technically... Obesity is considered 30% body mass index or higher. Yes. 30% or higher. Mm -hmm. um, so technically right now, I fall into that category. Hmm. So if you were to look at me, you might not think that. Yeah. But technically I do. Yeah, they, that's that BMI number she's yeah, talking about. Yeah, that BMI number. I mean, you know, there's obviously people go back and forth about, oh, but this and that and uh, culture, cultural differences yeah. and um, uh, what – what we feel like and what we f what we look like and um some people when they think about first of all thank you so much for having oh. me here <laughs> i mean all of that you talking about me i'm like i can't even believe i'm here because you know i love y'all so much yeah. and y'all do you. so much for the culture and and just bringing us forward 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 and and keeping everybody sharp um but you've always been you know an intelligent one oh, you know you've you. always you been are. that's true you know and this show has always <laughs> been intelligent and always been heather you always been feeding us as well so y'all feed us positivity trace you feed us positivity all the time and, and education and edutainment as chris Crystal. would say mm -hmm. you, you know what yeah. i mean um and that's what we do and uh -huh. so this is just a continuation of that and you know so i think when people think about obesity they think you know, my 600 pound life or right, you have right. four, four, five, 600 pounds. That yeah. is not the case. Mm -hmm. And um, obesity has to be tackled because, you know, a lot of people um, are living with this and dealing with this. And as soon as this came, as soon as this, as soon as I started to become a part of this campaign, I'm shocked at how many people have from our industry yeah. have walked up to me like, La, I want to be a part of this. La, what are you doing? Hit me up on, yeah. you know, DM me or hit me up and like, how can I be a part of this? This is my life. Mm -hmm. wow. I'm talking about successful people. I'm talking about Grammy winning people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about now maybe Oscar winning people. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about just regular people in our own families. Yeah. You know, are like, how can I find out more about this? What is this? And what it is is a very complex issue. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so this is me teaming up with Norvo to just create a conversation yeah. about it, to take away the stigma, to take uh. away the shame um, surrounding it, to unpack the whole thing, yeah. you know, and really just allow people to vo voice their opinions about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there are people very close to me who will remain nameless, uh, but are who are around me quite often um, are like, oh, yeah, you know, I, I was going to do this. I was going to play on this team, and I wanted to do this. And then people started calling me fat, and so I didn't do it. Right. Yeah. Like, this stops. This can stop your life, uh -huh. stop you mm. from doing what you want to do in your life. Uh -huh. And so if it's something like that, we can't have that. Or you say cute little things like, oh, girl, you getting a little chunky there. What's up? What's going on? Or, or you, you, you kind of husky there uh -huh. now. What's happening? Uh -huh. But those things can plant seeds in your mind, yeah. you know, you know and start start you uh, thinking about your body in a certain way or have you doing crazy yo-yo diets or have you taking pills to lose weight that don't work for you, mm -hmm. you know, or mm -hmm. you drop the hundred pounds, then you gain the hundred pounds. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not one like simple little thing that we want to start talking about, but we do want to start the start dialogue. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me ask people you have their own feelings about it. Yeah. It's interesting you say that because as a kid, you know, we we fat jokes. We used that. That was oh, a, yeah, the normal. Know, that, that was, was the norm. norm. Like, yeah. Get your yeah. fat ass off mm -hmm. the court, or right. you know, or uh, look at your fat ass. Yeah, look, your mama's so fat. I don't know if it applies on a basketball court. I oh, mean, okay, I think okay, on a okay, basketball okay, court okay, we okay, have to just like let, <laughs> let, <laughs> let, <laughs> let <laughs> anything goes on the court. But <laughs> you, can, you can say anything you want. As, as a basketball player, no, you know, it, yeah, yeah, no, you no can, holes barred. Your mama, everything. You know what I mean? Whatever, everything. Hashtag your mama, everything. However. But, but as a kid, if you're hearing yeah. that in elementary over and over, you don't know how that's playing on somebody's psyche, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and how it affects people. Mm -hmm. So the conversation, in my opinion, has to start at, at a 
at a child's age, right? Yes, it has to start very early because a lot of this starts in your very own home. Mm-hmm. It comes mm. from your parents. You know what I mean? Even the ways you may eat at home, what you may eat at home, not being aware of what it can really cause. Um, and and here's the here's the thing. I mean, we just want to live long, healthy lives That's at it. the end of the day. Mm. We want to enjoy our families. And if this pandemic has shown us anything, is that healthcare is not the same. Uh, how we all eat is not the same. Uh-huh. Access to the proper foods to keep us healthy is not the same. But it sure did open up a conversation about health. Uh-huh. Period. Dot. And people who I know who weren't even thinking about it before are talking about uh-huh. a lot of things now and open to a lot more conversations about their health than they were before. Uh-huh. You know, and how we treat our bodies than they were before. You know, um, and comments and certain things they might say. So it, it's it's a, it's it's quite a bit different now, you know, and, yeah. and so we're looking forward to um, doing this little tour. You know, this it, it's not a little tour; it's the, it's bigger than me tour. It's huge. It's it, I'm hoping it's a huge thing. Um, I'm teaming up with doctors and, mm-hmm. and influencers and and really the people, just allowing the people, the citizens, mm-hmm. to have their voices mm-hmm. heard. How do you feel about it? What Ooh. was your experience? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, I like that. Because that's what's important. Is 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 really just creating a dialogue so we can, you know, kind of move towards health and move towards just having a, a better way that we speak about this thing, and hopefully not have those kind of sm- snide comments. Mm-hmm. When you say it, you know what you're saying. Yeah. It won't, it won't yeah. just be like, oh, I, I didn't mean it. No, you know what you meant. And now we can, like, talk about it and kind of nip it in the bud and hopefully, Unpack. you know, not have people having the wrong mindsets as they get older, mm-hmm. you know, because they've been through so much as a kid. So, I'll be hurting your feelings when I call you high booty. I was going to talk to <laughs> Queen Latifah, but I was going to tell La, La. This is when I duck. <laughs> fatty, La, La. though, and so they got a let fatty. the shots go over. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, La, I know. Fatty in a good way. I mean, <laughs> like, see, this <laughs> is where the cultural <laughs> part <laughs> is. And this is why the conversation has to start. Because that's Sweat a compliment. Got a fatty. You know what I mean? Could be a compliment. But, but La, sad to say. The compliments can kill you. I don't want to have a fatty, La. <laughs> Real talk, to, you might not want to. You, you might not should want to have a fat. Okay. Is that grammatically correct? I don't know. No, but we know what you mean. You might not should want to have a fat. Like but maybe you, you do. I don't know. Whatever. I'm not going to stand up. Uh, you look beautiful, by the way, as yes, always. always. Yes. Um, thank you. Thank you. You look beautiful as always, as well. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> you. You quit looking at my fatty. I'm definitely trying to see. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm going to look away. Let me look, look at this right, slim okay. shady on the wall. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You know what I'm saying? So have you, I read, matter of fact, I did read this, that there's you wouldn't accept a role if they wanted you to change your body size in an unhealthy way. Is this true? I read something like that. No, I definitely wouldn't do that. I definitely okay. wouldn't do that. And I'm, I'm I'm fortunate to have, as you know, people around me who've been around me since I was pr- pretty much in high school. Mm-hmm. So the whole Flame View Unit crew, Sha, everybody, my mom, everyone was around me since I was young. And uh, luckily, I had a lot of people who were there to protect me and mm-hmm. <laughs> hold me down. And I didn't have to, like, really, really change. You know, I feel for some people who don't have that support system. People saying, you don't have to do that for that. No, I forget that. Like, mm-hmm. look, one door closes, another one opens. That's okay. what my mother would always say. And that's what me and Sha say whenever something happens. You know, we just go to that one. And and so, um, yeah, people would say those things. But mm-hmm. it ab- clearly, that's not for me. Mm-hmm. And there's a limit. I mean, as an actor, yes, you're going to. If this is what the role is, you may want to change your body for it. You may want to gain weight for mm-hmm. it. You may want to lose weight. You may want to get muscular. I mean, we think about what Angela Bassett did with Tina Turner, that yeah. role. I mean, wow. she went hard for that role. You know, um, uh, De Niro gained like 40 pounds or so to play uh, Al Rachel. Capone, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in The Untouchables or whatever mm-hmm. movie that was. So as an actor, you, you are allowed to do those kinds of things. But... When it's something that has to happen quick and it's really unhealthy and it's mm. it's just th- if this is something you're doing in your regular life, yeah, mm-hmm. that's not healthy. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I know, I know several of us probably know people who just popped up and then they had surgery and you like wait what what happened? <laughs> wait what? <laughs> yeah, yo you, yeah, yeah, you know. And it's like, but but what hasn't been dealt with is the psychological 
parts of that. Or yeah. the, or you could have the, the surgery, eating. but you still got to deal with the yeah. mental. Yeah, right? and so okay. if we haven't unpacked the mind, if we haven't talked about the societal issues of it, you know, uh, the physical issues of it, what it actually is, if you haven't really talked to your doctor, a doctor, you know what I mean, not the surgeon, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, you know, who's about to get paid, but I'm really, I'm talking about maybe a therapist even, maybe mm-hmm. um, the, your family member who you might have certain issues with or talking to any of your friends about how you really feel like so many people are carrying things around inside they don't see themselves the way other people see them see them Mm -hmm. or they or they've heard something that's hurt their feelings Mm -hmm. and they just been walking around with it for like 20 years the person has no clue and they continue to probably say those same things Mm. it's not funny yeah. You know what I mean? Have you ever said it's not funny? Have you ever had the courage to just say, look, that is not funny and you hurt my feelings every time you say it? Mm-hmm. So um, we 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 take certain things that we've had to take, especially as, you know, black people in this country, we've had to get thicker skin on a lot of things. Absolutely. You know what I mean? As, and let's not even get into being a black woman. Mm-hmm. You've had to, you know, get thicker skin on a lot of things. But when there's an opportunity to really talk about it and really – open up and keep it real, then I think we should do that because Mm -hmm. we want to make it better for generations that are coming up behind us to make sure that they have to deal with less than we have to deal with. Queen Latifah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Queen Latifah is here. It's a lot of phone lines. I know Heather want to have this Jersey reunion. <laughs> um, couple of questions. I believe it was Rhapsody. <laughs> rap so I love rap rap so yes. shout Yo, to shout rap. out to rap. Come shout on, rap city. Round of applause for rap city. One of the illest minds picking yeah, up the mic. For she's real. Crazy. And and she shared a little bit of her experience hanging out with you, how she was blown away mm-hmm. by your presence, mm-hmm. you know, and um being able to work with you. Was it Rhapsody that said she went to? Did she go so, to your yeah, house? Yeah, Rhapsody said that. She yeah. went to your house. And mm-hmm. She came to the house. <laughs> 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 oh, snap. Sway was in your refrigerator <laughs> without even being like, she fed you? But she <laughs> talked about a bathroom or something. You got a, a ill bathroom or something? <laughs> It depends on what time at which you go into that bathroom, whether it's ill or not. I don't know. I don't know who's in there. I don't know who's in that damn bathroom. I got lots of stuff to spray, though. It ain't no reason. That poopery. Yeah, leave that fan on. They live right up the hill, the poopery people. Do that. I was like, you the poopery? You own poopery? All okay. right. Okay. Okay. Um, why didn't I think of that? For oh, real. <laughs> But I, I, I just don't know. I don't she, know how, she spoke on your how success. How I didn't know she. Is. Yeah, she, she said your home Funny. is immaculate, and I got love watching you on Zooms back during the quarantine because I could see how you live, and it was amazing. Yeah, that was that was pool house times, man. Where, where does Jersey <laughs> sit in the legacy in terms of Jersey MCs in the legacy of hip hop? We talk about Atlanta big now. You know, of mm-hmm. course, New York, mm-hmm. and most people around the country would confuse Jersey MCs with New York early on mm-hmm. LA of course the Bay Area you got to speak to that Houston but do you feel like Jersey in terms of its hip hop legacy has been uh, underrepresented under acknowledged or you think folks understand the prowess of the MC that comes from Jersey I mean people I think as educated as you for sure yeah. would know you yeah. know what I mean Heather knows you know what I mean but um, I think you might be right some people confuse New York MCs with New Jersey MCs because mm-hmm. we so close uh-huh. to one another, um, but we we in there pretty heavy, you know. Okay. We in there pretty heavy. I've been trying to tell him uh, why <laughs> he just to fight in him, man. He just want to keep I mean, fighting it. Like who you who you want to go with? You want to go with. You know, Ice T is from New Jersey, oh, so damn. we even you get just, you gangsta, West Coast <laughs> dude, <laughs> get like, gangsta oh, rap. On, man. Hold up, Early. we even get Uh-oh. gangsta rap. Uh, a credit it up in there, so okay, for y'all real. taking Ice T's legacy from right. Cali and bringing it to Jersey. Right. He's not okay. taking or, no, no, no. Story. He took he took his he Oops. took his essence from New Jersey <laughs> out to Cali and was like, oh, I could do this and this and that and the third and Cali. <laughs> okay, so let me do this. Sister you know, you, it's, it's a Jersey. This that and the third. Jersey. You know what I mean? Um, so <laughs> definitely. But I mean, come on, you got naughty. Red, yeah. man. Red man, you got the artifacts, you got Mormon, Heather, you mm-hmm. got Rod Digger. It's, 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 it's a lot, it's a lot. You got God. a lot of people from Jersey, you know. No, nah, I, 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 and Jersey has quality MCs. I've Shout always Shout out the Lords of Underground. Lords of Underground. All. Okay, yep. so okay, so Jersey is right up there. But y'all have to talk about it more because I, I, I do know because you know I'm a historian 
but the rest of the rest of the audience doesn't know like that. They know. Nobody you be knows. hogging when they call. Mm-hmm. They know. <laughs> People know. Yeah, you talked a lot. I'm going to jump. No, nah, but. We but got Fetty. We got Joe. Oh, Fetty. Yeah, Fetty. Like, oh, no, my Joe gosh. Joe, Joe, Joe's nice. Yeah. yeah, I'm, yeah. Just, I'm just scanning around. I'm like, well, let me move to Patterson. Let me try to go. I'm like oh. visually trying to scan over the areas, you know. But that particular, I was trying to break down the sway. <laughs> Like the difference between Jersey City and like Newark East Orange area. So for Jersey City, it was Chill Rob G. Oh, it was definitely. it was like that essence that Apache and, Apache and, Latin, and, La- and La- Latin, okay. all the, those guys okay. were there. Yeah, okay. But Newark East Orange being so close, it's a bridge that separates There's us. Way yeah, it's a bridge, water. and okay. and and that's it. <laughs> We just trying to tell you. Just a, just a bridge. <laughs> just a bridge. And when you cross that bridge, then you find Red Man and you go to East Orange, you get naughty and all and, that. You, know, you can use everybody. Okay, Sha- Shaquem told me that he introduced Tretch to Tupac. Yeah, we pretty much did. I mean, we were we were label mates. So okay. I was I was on Tommy Boy, Digital Underground was on Tommy Boy. Right. Tretch went on the road with me as a roadie. Tupac was basically a roadie in Digital Underground, you know, so they he introduced them probably on the road out there and they just like clicked. Uh-huh. They clicked and they were like just brothers, instant brothers. We had to keep them out of so much stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Every day on tour it was like, okay, we gotta have the sit down talk because they was ready to bang out everywhere. They yeah. was just they was just I mean it was just like kindred spirits. You really, know? you couldn't mm. stop them those two. So um yeah that's that's family right there did you have what was your relationship like with Pac I'm just curious like that was my little brother you yeah. know like if if Tupac loved you if he met you and he he messed with you right there on the spot then then there's nothing he would not do for you uh-huh. like he would go all out for you like he knew you for 20 years mm-hmm. and that's just the type of person he was but he was I mean he was honest and you know, he went through his things, and he was so talented. I mean, he created the Humpty Dance. He made up the Humpty Dance. Mm-hmm. Like, I watched him make up the Humpty Dance. Like, mm-hmm. like he was there when yeah, he made it up? he made up the Humpty Dance. Uh-huh. It was like trying to think of somebody falling off the wall. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, what would Humpty do? Humpty, hum, you know, <laughs> right. the egg fell off the wall. So he's like, oh, <laughs> acted like he was falling. But he had skills. Like, he could dance. You know what I yeah. mean? So he turned it into a dance. And then they all made it to dance. That's crazy. I did not know you that. Know? Wow. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, I, I just mean, dropped the gym. We was out there. I remember we, was, we were on tour somewhere. And this was at the times when, um, you know, um, us being able to say whatever we wanted to say on stage was not going down. They were trying to censor us, and mm. censorship was big. Shout to Luke Skywalker. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> shout to Uncle Luke for going to, going to the courts Facts. for us so we could say speak our minds freely. Um, but we were, we were in one state, and they were like, yo, if y'all curse, they're going to lock you up. Mm-hmm. So, <laughs> so Tupac, the plan was he's going to say his rhymes and everything, but at the end of the show, he's going to jump into the audience. Mm-hmm. He jumped into the audience to to leave, to run, basically, but the damn spotlight followed him. <laughs> <laughs> so he's, like, trying to get away through a whole crowd, and he would have made it, but the spotlight stayed on him the whole I'm way. Dying. And the police is like, snatch. I'm like, damn. Yeah, right on his peanut it head. Was it was such was a right good here. plan. <laughs> Damn, that spotlight man was good. <laughs> That's funny. They usually whack. Spotlight people can be whack, but th- this one was on point. That so. was on point. I was downtown Jersey City the other day and, and went by the old, well, it's not there anymore, but where the firehouse used to be. Shout out to Shaq yeah. Kim, as you mentioned, in y'all's office that was right. in Jersey City. Do you miss, like, that whole, because, like you said, back then things were so different, but y'all were in that office. Like, you would yeah. go by that firehouse at any given moment. Shaw was that in his there? office. Yep. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you L- mom. Mom, rest in peace. Like people were yeah, in there. Love you your was, mom, by the was, way. Rest in peace yes, to that angel. Yes, yes. you would see the artists. Yeah. Everybody. Do you miss a little bit of that camaraderie? Ever, you know, thinking about the music business then to now? I definitely miss miss having like that home base. Yeah, I do miss that home base where, you know, you could just drop by and see anybody. You know, mm-hmm. and, and people. And it was kind of like our home base for people to come. And you know, we we managed. You know. So many so, artists yeah. back in the days from SWV to Outkast to Monica to Digital, yeah, Kushnickens and Black Sheep, Black Sheep, and just everybody. We had so we were we were young and we had we were young managers. Mm-hmm. So uh-huh. 
the energy, you know, thank God for my mother being in there to, to be to give everybody the couch time they needed. Mm -hmm. When everything we, we at the end of our rope, we just go in Miss O's office and she would talk to you and you calm down and you come back renewed <laughs> and refreshed and ready to go further, you know. Uh -huh. But um, uh, it was it was a it was a good place to cultivate creativity mm -hmm. and, um, for 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 young dreamers like ourselves, mm -hmm. you know. And that was just what it was, and I see a lot of that today. Yeah. You know, I see a lot of that in the fact that artists can, you know, if you can figure out a path to to, to get your records played, your, you know, through streaming services or whatever, you can make your own path and own your own your own music and mm -hmm. your own legacy. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, we just were young, independent minded kids back mm -hmm. then. And, and we still are. The area of Jersey City I'm talking about, Sway, where I tell you, like, it's pretty much unaffordable now. Yeah, like, you can. we you were can. all down here first. Wow. Like, we were in that area yeah. first, yeah. first. And now, but factories. Yeah, factories. The street, storage. Is, it's so unaffordable now. Like, Newport yeah. Cinema, all that stuff is down there. But it, it's unaffordable to people from that community and from that area. But mm. they were down there first. We were all living down yeah, there. Yeah, we also lived, lived there. Down I was about there. to yeah. say, we lived there. Down too, the street so. from uh -huh. each other. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, you two. Apartments. Go back. I feel like y'all at the end of Color Purple <laughs> doing this right we now. Are. <laughs> <laughs> Flavor unit, yeah, though. That was there. the other thing about there. July. Because, mm -hmm. see, I'm observing from the West, right? And mm -hmm. you were a boss before that became a Early. trendy thing to say. Early. That flavor unit was the equivalent to what maybe a rock nation is today. Mm -hmm. Flavor mm -hmm. unit That's was a way fact, back then. That's a fact. And it was a woman, a black woman at That's the head fact. of flavor. Give That's her a, a round fact. of applause. That's, That's a, a fact. fact. That's a Respect. fact. Respect. You have to say it, but that's why it's important we bring this up. You had to be there to understand what was going on. Absolutely. Had to be there to understand yeah. what they was doing early. Early. Yo, La, I know y'all got to go because those people over there stood up. <laughs> <laughs> it's time. No, I'm excited. I'm excited. Um, we come in uh, to we here in New York tonight, June 7th. Um, mm -hmm. We're going to Houston on the 10th, and we're going to L.A. on the 14th, and we're going to really talk about this issue because, you know, this is something in our homes. You know, we, we love it, – it, it's important to talk about it culturally as well because um, – you know, food is love sometimes. Yeah. And yeah. then some people are really doing everything they can to try to, like, lose weight. But what we have to understand is it might not be have anything to do with what you're doing. Mm -hmm. This may be genetic, mm -hmm. and hormonal. Like, if you can understand it from a clinical perspective, then you'll understand that it's not your fault that you can't drop this weight like that mm -hmm. if that's what you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. And that everybody who, I mean, again, look at me, you don't probably don't think obese. You know what I mean? Um, but if you were to go through my numbers, that's where I would fall. So I think I think we have to really look at the health aspects of it all because enough already. Like we we you know we listen when we put salt on our food, we yeah. haven't even tasted it. Yep. We just we grab the, the salt stuff, and put salt, it on salt, 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 salt. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like and I ha and I did that at one point in my life. I broke out. You know, I got grew out of that. I kind of mm -hmm. broke out of that, especially the more time I spent in L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because I had more options. Um, on healthy things to eat that didn't have a bunch of salt in them. Yep. But there's certain places I go and I can't like instantly, as soon as I get there, I like gain 10 pounds. Mm -hmm. It's so, so there's salt in the water, I feel like. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, what's, 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 what's in the water? Eat for water feel like a meal. Yeah, <laughs> some heavy water right there. That's some girthy water. No, <laughs> you even need some girth. That water, that water got, so, got a fatty. <laughs> that water, water got, got a fatty. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it's but it's Silly. but it's all love, you know. Yeah. I mean? If we could talk about it from a loving perspective and really educate ourselves, I learn about it every time, you know. Absolutely, I'm around people to teach me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I love it. It's bigger than me. dot com. Make sure you guys check out it's bigger than me. dot com. I went on it. There's a few segments. How, they talk about how to have a conversation about it around it what is obesity yeah. it's all of these different tools mm -hmm. you could use if you go on that platform it's mm -hmm. bigger than me.com queen latif you got to come back and just co-host yes, with yes. us one time you come and back. we be in la like once a week 
uh, a and, once and a month. Once a month. Yeah. We're in L.A. broadcasting, so That's come through. Pain. Well, with the, with the Equalizer, I'm in L.A. once a month now. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> yes. on the Equalizer. Thank Give a big round of applause for that. Come we'll be on. back. Two more seasons. End of the road Rocket. coming. Okay. Um Proud of yeah, you. Yeah, End of the Road. Yes. That's end on the Netflix. End of the That's summer. Enough. And Hustle is out right now with Adam Sandler on Netflix. I'm in that as well, so mm-hmm. I saw check that out. Adam's your guy, man. He, he, that, dude, that dude, that dude looks out, dude. man. Yeah, he's a funny guy, too. Adam's been here before, too. Queen Latifah, you are truly a blessing. God bless you, yes, your entire God bless family. You. Yes, we are on your team no matter what. It's so unreal uh, to be here. I'm yeah, so very happy. Come on, man. We, gonna, we still here. Long. And it's good to know you're a Warriors fan. You're cheering on the Warriors. I want to say thank Nobody you for that. Nobody said that. I told you you putting words in people's mouths. Why? What? You're not cheering for the Warriors? <laughs> Crickets? Is that Listen, a I'm trying to Switzerland. Switzerland. Go, you I'm Swiss, neutral? So I'm Swiss. I ain't, you are not walking me into that I right now. I almost had it all. You saw how I did that? I, I saw how you Steph did Curry. it. Yeah. Green. Okay. Yeah, 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 look at Steph Curry. You but said I his name. Horford too. I can't get none of you. Oh, okay. Stay out of that right uh-huh. there. I saw you wore that, green that, today. Is that why you wore green you. today? Uh, I wore black too. <laughs> like Nets colors right there. Okay. Some Nets okay. colors in right. Home tell. Okay. All right. <laughs> Queen Latifah is neutral. All right. Thank you for coming through. <laughs> Thank All you right. for having me. Absolutely. As Every always, time. Tell my brother Shy. I said what up when you see him too. He's hearing it right now. Oh, okay. Shy. What up, man? Everybody say hi, Shy. Okay. Hey, Shy. Okay. Shout okay. to Mark the 45. I know you listening. Mark, Mark the 45 King, the legend. He's been up here too. Ba boom, ba boom. All right. Oh shit! Do I gotta switch it up? The nice lines affect me, but my rhymes direct me. Forget the crowd, the floor, they know my why they sweat me. Princess of the posse. Princess of the posse. Dig that up, princess of the posse. Okay, we got Henry Winkler. Uh, it's coming up in about 20 minutes. The Fonz. Y'all hang out. All right, go ahead and play what you got, man. That's cool. I know. Go ahead. All right, Queen Latifah. Put on the black hair side. All right.